So, hello and welcome to lesson 9 of our study of mathematical biology 1. So, in lesson 9, we are going to derive the basic reproductive number using what we call the next generation matrix. Okay. So, I'm going to kind of read off a final year student of mathematics, KNUSD, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more contains as such. So, before we go through the derivation, let us introduce you to what the next generation matrix is. So, the next generation matrix was invented by Dickman and Hesterbeck in 1990. Okay. And the basic reproductive number R0 is given by the spectral radius of the product of F and the M, F, M, V inverse. Okay, so what this means is that R0 is equal to, so you have to find F times V inverse, then you find the spectral norm of it and that becomes your arrow knot okay all right so arrow knot is that the dominant eigenvalue of the product of f and v inverse so our f all right so we have something that we call Greek F. And the Greek F contains is a, a, the terms inside contains only secondary infections. And we have the Greek vein. Okay. So the Greek vein also contains other terms which do not include secondary infections. So most of the time when you have your model, the first thing you have to look out is to look for the disease classes and after getting the disease classes you look for your the ones containing secondary infections and the one which do not have such okay don't worry we'll go through the steps so steps in the derivation so when you have your equations step one the first thing you have to do is to regroup the system of ordinary differential equations into disease classes and non-disease classes and that's the first thing you have to know and the second step is that you use only the disease class or classes to find your greek f in your greek vein that's a term containing only secondary infections that's the greek f and the greek veins the other ones so note the greek f contains terms with secondary infection and the Greek vein contains the others, okay? So for step three, you obtain F, which is a matrix of partial derivatives of the disease component, Greek F, with respect to original dependent variables, okay? All right, don't worry, as we solve examples, you you get an understanding more. So we perform similar derivation for vein based on the Greek vein. Then the step four is we find the product of F and inverse of V. So we find the product of this. F and V inverse. Right then the step five is we find the eigenvalues of F, V inverse and we select the dominant one which yields our basic reproductive number, R0. So these are the five steps we go through. To use the next generation matrix to estimate our basic reproductive number R0. Okay, so we could recall in lesson 9, we were talking about the SEIR model, no, in lesson 8, we we're talking about the SEIR model, alright, and we had four equations for them. So we are going to derive the basic reproductive number for that model using the next generation matrix.
So we recall that from lesson 8, we had these four equations, right? Okay. So step 1 says we should regroup this into the disease class and the non-disease class. So you can see that with these four equations that we have, here we have S, which stands for the susceptible class. They don't have the disease. Here we have R, which stands for those who have recovered. They don't have the disease. So that means these two are the non-disease class. We are not interested in them. We are interested in those who have been exposed. Some of them will have the disease, right? Just that they can't transmit it. So this is a disease class. And those who are infected, those who have the disease and they can transmit it. So this is also a disease class. So that means these two will be our disease class. So it will be our disease classes, okay? So that means we have these two, the E, the T equals beta S I minus kappa E minus mu E. And the I, the T is equal to kappa E minus gamma I minus mu I, right? So after getting this, the next step, which is step two, says that we should obtain our Greek F, which is, um, which contains our secondary infections and our Greek vein contains the others, okay? So you can see that when it comes to the first one, our secondary infection is the beta. That's what our secondary infection is. So that means we have beta SI here. The rest of them, they are not secondary infections, so we are not interested. When it comes to the second component, we don't have any beta there, so that's why we have zero. Then when it comes to obtaining our Greek vein, you know, when we take the secondary infection, the rest becomes that. And here, since we don't have any secondary infection, the whole of this. So that's how we form these two matrices, okay? There are no matrices, though. All right. All right. So you're now coming to form a matrix out of them. So from the Greek F, we obtain a matrix F. And then from the Greek V, we obtain a matrix V. So now, constructing our F matrix, what we do is that we let F of EI represent beta SI and G of EI represent what we have here, so zero. So here, so this will be the same thing. When we are constructing our V matrix based on the Greek V, so the matrix is given by del F, del E, del F, del I, del G, del E, del G, del I. So you have to find the partial derivatives, okay? So when we differentiate our F with respect to E, we'll get zero. We don't have that component there. And when we, you know, since this one is zero, all the derivatives will give us zero. And when we differentiate our uh, f of e i with respect to i will get beta s, right? So we get this. So what we do is that we estimate this at a disease free equilibrium. So you remember that in lesson 8 we said we had two types of them there. We have the non disease equilibrium or the disease free equilibrium. And we also had the endemic equilibrium, okay? So the disease free equilibrium for this is one zero because I is zero. So then wherever you find S, we put one there. And that gives us this. So we've been able to obtain our matrix for F, okay? Then we go to our Greek vein. So our Greek vein was this. And based on this, you're supposed to obtain our matrix vein. So this here will be our F of EI. And this will be our G of E I. Okay. Right. And so our uh, matrix V is given by this. So we find our partial derivatives. So del F del E, del F del I, del G del K, and del G del I. So we have this. Okay. So when we get this, we are supposed to also estimate this at the this is free equilibrium, but you know we don't have I or S then, so we'll still get the same thing. 
So after getting this, you know, we have to find a product of this. So then we have to find the inverse of A. So you have a 2 by 2 matrix. A, B, C, D. To find the inverse, it is the determinant, which is A, D minus B, C. Right? The reciprocal of it. Then we change the position of our A and D. And then we negate the rest. So that means our inverse is going to take this form. All right? So this is what we will get. So it is one over the determinant of A. And the determinant of A is this, right? This time this minus this time this. So we finally get this to be our V inverse. Then we can decide to multiply through, right? To make it simple. So doing the multiplication gives us this. So the next thing is to find f times v inverse. And this is f. This is v inverse. So two by two matrices. We are multiplying them. Alright? So we are going to have zero times this plus beta times this, which will give us this. Then we will have zero times this. Then plus zero times this will give us zero. We have zero times zero plus beta times this, which will give us this. And we have zero times this plus zero times this, which will give us this. So then we are going to have this two by two matrix here. All right. So right now what we have to do is to um, find the eigenvalue. So we have to find the eigenvalue of this, the eigenvalues of this. Now we find the dominant eigenvalue from that. So finding the eigenvalue, we use this formula here. Right? So putting them through, we are going to get something like this. You know, we subtract lambda from each diagonal element. So it will be this time this, and minus this time this. It goes higher because of the zero. So we finally have something of this form. And from here, our lambda 1 is negative beta kappa over kappa plus mu. I'm multiplying gamma plus mu. And our lambda 2 is 0. Okay. So we have to look for the dominant one. So we find the absolute value of the two of them. So of lambda 1 gives us this. And of lambda 2 gives us this. In all sense, our parameters are all greater than 0. No beta is greater than zero, kappa is greater than zero, mu is greater than zero, and gamma is greater than zero. So it means this will always be larger than what? This zero. So it means beta kappa over kappa plus mu, gamma plus mu is the dominant eigenvalue. And hence that corresponds to our basic reproductive number R naught. So it means this is the formula for computing the arrow naught for our SEIR model with vital dynamics in force of infection. Okay, all right, so we did this using the next generation matrix. So, if you didn't understand anything, you can always go over it, okay, and thank you very much for watching this video so all the best and see you in the next lesson so in the next lesson which is lesson 10 we'll talk about another model a different model called the SIRS model and we will treat it without demographic effects or vital dynamics so we've learned SIR SEIR and we'll learn SIRS okay so thank you very much and see you soon